Okay, now let's compare. Remember I told you this is called type 2 supernova. What is a type 1 supernova? So compare them. Type 2 supernovas happen when a heavy mass star explodes, and which is what we just talked about. Some famous supernovas in history are, this is one of the most famous ones, uh, Chinese observed the supernova explosion in 1054. And imagine they didn't have telescopes back then. How bright must this have been to be visible? Basically what it ended up happening is during the day sky, you have a star all of a sudden shining along with the sun. That would be fun for it to happen these days. I wish it happened. You would literally see a star during the daytime and go, what the heck's going on, you know? They saw that star for several weeks during the day. They observed it. They weren't exactly, you know, um, certain what it was. This explosion nowadays is called Crab Nebula because the, the, the gases that it formed have the appearance of a crab. Okay, Crab Nebula. Another one that Tycho Brahe observed, when we were talking about Tycho Brahe's history, we said he observed a new star, and he wrote about this new star. It actually ends up that he was wrong. This wasn't a new star that was forming. It was a very bright star that exploded, and it was uh, so, so bright that the explosion was observable by him, Tycho Brahe. It was 1572. Kepler observed one in 1602. Okay. So we could show it here. These are some of the prominent supernova remnants in history. They're not the ones we're observing nowadays. Nowadays we observe more of them because we have computer images that we can analyze the sky we can observe maybe one or two per, uh, per year, you know. But back then, it would have to have been very bright during the day in order for them to observe it. They didn't have all these computer instruments. So uh, let's see. Where is the Crab Nebula? Um, crab Nebula, you see here? Crab Nebula. The age, 936 years. So that's about 900 years before us that it was observed, okay? By the way, did the star explode 900 years ago? Or did they just observe it 900 years ago? Yeah, they observed the star exploding 900 years ago. Then when did the star explode? It depends how far the explosion was, how far away the explosion was. Look at this next column. The distance from us in light years is 6,520. 6,520 for the Crab Nebula. That means the star explodes, exploded 6,000 years before the Chinese observed it. Okay, you see that? The vastness of time. The star exploded 6,000 years before. The light got to us, and then we can see, oh, the star is exploding. It's not happening when the Chinese are observing it. It's happening 6,000 years before them, you see. Uh, another famous one, Vela. It hap the event happened 10,000 years ago. Whoever was here back then observed it 10,000 years ago. The distance from us is 1,600 years. That means it happened 1,600 years before that time. Before 10,000, you know. Then you can keep going. Cygnus, 20,000 years ago. Lupus, 975 years ago. Pupis A, 4,000 years. Cassiope, 200. Tycho's supernova. Tycho, you see. It happened 400 years ago, which is, that's when roughly Tycho lived, 1600. How far away is it? 7,800 light years. So the star exploded 7,800 years before Tycho observed it, <laughs> okay? So 
these things are very far. Kepler supernova. He observed it 370 years ago. So basically he observed it around 30 years after Tycho did. Okay. How far away is the star? 14,340 light years. Imagine how bright it must be for him to be able to see it. Okay. Amazing brightness. And it, uh, it, was, uh, it, uh, it took place 14,000 years before he observed it. Now, in the modern era, one of the most famous ones is supernova 1987. Because by that time, we had very sophisticated instruments, computer instrumentation. When this uh, star exploded, we started studying everything that's coming from that star. And we started studying the, in detail this supernova. One of the things that we expected is for the supernova to give us a lot of neutrinos. These particles are called neutrinos, and we observed it. We actually saw it, uh, observed it through our instrumentation. So it happened February of 1987. So the reason they call it 1987A, it happened in the early part of that year, in the early part of the year 1987. And the picture is something like this. See here, this one. So before the supernova, if you had observed this portion of the sky, it would have looked like that. Not very eventful. And you couldn't even really predict that that star is about to die. You just look at it and you go, okay, no, it's not very interesting. And then all of a sudden when it explodes, this is what you see. Okay, you get the difference there. Oh, they should have wrote here 87. There's a typo, 1987A. Uh, so amazing, from here to here, you see, all of a sudden. Type 1 supernova takes place in a binary star system with one white dwarf and one ordinary star. This is why I said earlier that the way that they named it is kind of weird. Uh, in order to have a type 1 supernova, you need two stars in order for that to take place. In order to have a type 2 supernova, you only need one star. One star dying is a type 2 supernova. They should have named the first one type 1. They should have named this type 2. But they did that so that you guys can get confused on the tests. That's very important. They want to confuse you as much as possible. So remember, it switched the naming. So here's what the mechanism of a type 1 supernova, right? 1. You need two stars. So here's what you need to take place. You need a star that's a white dwarf that is already dead. Next to it, you need another star, and that star is starting to die. It's starting to die, becoming a red giant, becoming a red giant, growing, growing, growing. When it's growing, 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 it starts, the gravity of the white dwarf starts sucking in the mass, you see, from that other star. It starts sucking it in. When, when they're too close to each other, the mass starts accumulating on the white dwarf too quickly too quickly. The white dwarf can't handle this. A lot of mass accumulated on it. When the mass of the white dwarf exceeds a certain value, the white dwarf explodes. Okay? When the white dwarf explodes, this star explodes with it. The whole thing explodes. Okay? This is type 1 supernova. Now, do you expect it to be brighter than the type 2 or dimmer? Think about it. There's two stars exploding. Brighter, yeah, and it ends up actually being brighter, okay? The other thing that is interesting, when this thing explodes, there's no remnant left. The core is not, the core is gone. The core is already the core. The white dwarf is the core. And it, it takes this guy with it, okay? This guy also explodes, the core is not left. So when this kind of supernova happens, we observe the middle, there's nothing left. It's like a double a suicide homicide, you know. This guy commits suicide and kills that guy with it. Okay.
So it's always nice to compare them. See here, this is the type 1 supernova. White dwarf sucks the mass. When the white dwarf's mass is less than 1.4 solar mass, it's OK. But as long as the mass of the white dwarf exceeds 1.4 solar mass, the white dwarf collapses, explodes, takes this out with it. When you look at the center of that kind of supernova, there's probably no remnant left, nothing in the middle. This is the regular one, massive star, perhaps in the red giant stage with all of the fuel consumed. The core collapses, explodes, type 2. When you look at the core, neutron star or black hole, let's see. So if you go and observe this, and if it verifies your theory, then our theories are correct. The disk, so here's what happens. The gas from the ordinary star collects around the white dwarf. This disk accumulates mass on the white dwarf, causing it to surpass its maximum mass. The maximum mass it can have is 1.4 times the mass of the sun. A white dwarf cannot have more mass than that for reasons very, that are very complex, and uh, you don't, we don't need to go into that. Um, the white dwarf blows up completely. This is 10 times brighter than the type 2, right? We expect it to be brighter, we said, because two stars are dying. Now, there is another kind of event that takes place that is likely to happen. This one is called nova. It's not supernova, it's just a nova. So it's a supernova is a nova on steroids, OK? Nova is regular. Why does nova, nova happen? How does it happen? Well, it's related to type 1 supernova, but they are less severe. Here's what happens. The white dwarf ejects the accretion disk, but it does not blow up. Okay? Novas are likely to happen when there's a white dwarf and then there's a companion, but the companion is kind of far from it. So when the companion starts growing and then the mass starts accumulating on the white dwarf, it doesn't accumulate very rapidly, kind of slowly. And then the white dwarf, when it accumulates mass, the white dwarf is able to release that mass once in a while. Okay? The human analogy of this that I'm thinking of is when you have stress in your life. When the stress builds up too fast, too suddenly, and you don't handle it, you don't take care of it, you blow up, you know, commit suicide and whatever, um, you go crazy, and they call it going uh, postal. There's a term for that, right? Going postal. So you don't want a type 1 supernova happening in your life. OK, what do you want happening? The nova happening. Nova is like stress builds up slowly. Then what do you need to do to release it? Go swimming, go exercising, go walking around the block, biking, whatever you need to do getting rid of that stress, right? And the nova is basically the star's way of going biking, going swimming, and everything. Okay? So every couple thousand years, the white dwarf will just release this excess mass that has built up around it. Let's see. Yeah, so that, that's exactly what happens. The nova is what you want to happen. The mass builds up, but it doesn't go over 1.4, and then you release that mass. And then basically, once you release that mass, you, the mass goes back down. Yeah, it just stays there. It stays there. It doesn't die. Yeah. So what happens? When it's releasing this mass, the binary star system appears as a brighter star for a few months and then fades away. So here is a picture of a nova happening. See here, the white dwarf <coughs> is here. It's getting bright. And then uh, next to it, you probably can't see, maybe here, here in this vicinity, there's the companion star. So the white dwarf is getting bright, bright, bright. It's releasing the mass, but it's not completely exploding. You see? And then the white dwarf, after the release of mass, after it gets big, 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 the mass is gone, it's going to come back down and then turn back into a white dwarf. And then the, the white dwarf will continue to live the rest of its life. And then the nova will happen 
after that too. Several, several times he can keep doing that. Okay? Eventually he might die, but it can take place many times. So nova is basically a lighter version of a type 1 supernova then. So this process can repeat many times because the white dwarf does not get destroyed during the process. 